Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the Clay Share Studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we're going to be glazing. And I think we're just going to do brush on glazes for tonight. We will do dip and pour glazes another night. But tonight we're just going to brush on in because as I was chatting with the folks on Instagram a few minutes before we went live here, I got two rolling racks full of bisqueware. That's a lot of bisque pots. So they need to get glazed because I don't want to move bisqueware. I want finished pieces that I can then move the finished pieces to my new studio or put them up for sale so you guys can have them. And then I don't have to move them at all. That's the best, right? So that's the way um, we're going to go. So tonight I have got Amico, I have got Mako, I've got some Georgie's glazes. I do use Clayscapes glazes from time to time in their brush on formula. I love them as dip and pour though. That's my go-to for them. So we will see um, if we get to any Clayscapes tonight. We will probably do a dedicated brush on glaze for Clayscapes glazes and a dedicated dip and pour for Clayscapes because they do have those two different formulas. So I need to get my monitor on here for my view and I can get all your comments. So if you have questions or comments or anything that you want to chime in, please feel free to ask those questions. That's what I'm here for tonight. So as I'm glazing, I will talk about the tools I'm using and the materials I'm using. But if there's something in particular that I didn't mention and you want to know, please ask because that's what I'm here for. All right. So I think all, no, these two don't. Almost all my pieces I have in front of me have texture of some sort. So I've got this really great plate made with my Jess's Town rolling pin. And this is my cloud rim template. I love this shape. And this is the same texture. That's Jess's Town there in a square plate. So we're going to try to get these two done, which will give me a chance to talk to you about using glazes and texture. Sorry about the shaking. Kevin's turning the monitor on. He forgot to do that. <laughs> it was uh, actually unplugged. It was actually unplugged. And then I made this great bowl. Um, hi, everybody. I get to see you all now. What goes well with obsidian? Ooh, Jane, such a good question. So that's Amico Obsidian Celadon. And I really like it with seaweed. I like it with textured turquoise. I have done sapphire on top of it, mind you. You put these on top. You can do smoky merlot and it is yummy. So you do the obsidian three coats first and then you do bands of these other colors and they look like the Northern Lights. But if you just need a simple combo, Obsidian and seaweed, just those two together are gorgeous. Very, very simple and lovely. So this is a daisy bowl we made on a broadcast a while back. I'm like, I don't know when we did this, before Christmas. Um, and these daisy stamps you can get from Sharon Hoppy Designs. They're really, really great. So we got texture and then I've got a piece that's extruded that will glaze. So a no texture, because I know we some folks out there aren't into the texture. And then I have this wheel thrown and altered little bowl that will be glazing too. So we got that coming up. So there's, there's a, whew, that's a lot of glazing. I'm, I'm already tired. No. Usually when it's a glaze, um, like week and I have to fill the kiln, if I'm doing brush on glazes, it takes me three days. If I'm doing dip and pour glazes, one day. Dip and pour glazing goes significantly faster. Hi, Drew from Clayscapes. Hi, everybody else. Yay, another sale. The sale will probably happen after my surgery in March. So we'll see how everything goes. As soon as I, the sooner I get this glaze, the sooner there's another sale. And I know you all want that. So, and I want you to have them. So we'll do the textured flat pieces and then we'll do the thrown and extruded pieces. And I just want to show you some examples of textured pieces I have glazed and finished. So these are with Amico Celadons. This here, the larger plate is with Poppy and the smaller one is with Tangelo, and I put Mako Light Flux around the rim. So I don't know if you can see, if the camera's picking up that rim there, you can see that melty light kind of cream color. That is Mako's Light Flux, which is actually a glaze, but it melts a lot. Hi, Patty's here and she's watching. So that's a really great thing and I wanna mention that. Those of you who are watching on the Clay Share app, you can watch this right now on your TV. If you have Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV, you can watch this up on your TV in your living room and then come over to Facebook 
and then comment there. Just turn your sound off on your, on your iPad or your smart tablet or your phone and you can comment on your phone but watch on the big screen. So you're not stuck looking at a teeny tiny device. You can have it as big as you want. You can see everything crystal clear and it'll be really good. I think you'll like it. And hi, Michael's here. Michael shared a great post today with, um, actually I think he shared it yesterday, his 3D printer. Very inspiring. Lots of ideas if you want to make your own texture, your own rollers, your own stamps, your own cookie cutters. Um, has me thinking about maybe, maybe for my birthday I need one of those. We'll see. I'm, I'm throwing hints out. Anybody listening? Uh, anybody listening over there? <laughs> what I want for my birthday? <laughs> So clay share news and we'll get to glazing. New class coming out tomorrow. This is a big one. It's the jumbo bowl. It's that great big bowl I've been showing and teasing you all with the last few weeks. I call it jumbo bowl, but actually it's turned into the jumbo because it's so big and it's rather appropriate because Super Bowl's coming up and you need a super jumbo bowl. So here's the back. Here's the front. I love it. It's pretty big. That's a big hand-built bowl. I'm going to teach you how to make this and look at that rim detail right there. It's gorgeous. So that'll be out tomorrow. Everything in this class step by step, starting with our clay slab, talking about adding texture, the way I glazed it step by step. This exact piece, we glaze this exact piece. I teach you how to do the rim bands here and here on the foot and on the actual rim and then we do the texture um, doing the highlighting the texture on the top. When is my birthday? My birthday is April, April 10th. Actually, uh, we'll be doing a workshop on April 10th. That is uh, Maria. Maria Sampson is gonna be doing a whimsical garden stack workshop with Clayshare. And that is gonna be happening in April. I believe the 10th and the 17th are her days. It's a, oh, it's three-parter, isn't it? It's three, two hours. So stay tuned. I'll be putting all the stuff up later, which is the perfect chance for me to tell you about our other workshops coming up. We have Kevin Kowalski doing a mocha diffusion workshop and some hand building and wheel throwing. That is coming up in March. So you want to check that out. Clayshare.com. Scroll down to the bottom. You'll see all the workshops there. And we have a few others coming your way. And we've just recently wrapped one up with Adam Field, which was amazing, and with Doug Peltzman. So if you want to check out all the workshops, you can see them there. Remember, premium members save 20%. And that discount code is on clayshare.com in the forums. So you can't access those forums on the app. You have to go to clayshare.com. But they're there, so the codes are there. And we also share them out in our emails to our premium members and in our private broadcasts. So um, while I chit chat, I'm gonna clean this up and we'll get going on the glazing. That's the exciting news. I see a lot of people do that with watch on their TV with the app and then type on their smart device. Yeah, it's a great way to do it. And Lisa's niece is the same birthday as mine. Oh, we'll be birthday twins. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna make sure I got everything I need. There it is. So what I like to do before I glaze a piece is you wanna check it over to make sure. And I think, do we wanna, do you wanna switch to the overhead? Yes. Yeah, roll. We're gonna roll to the overhead and this is a, a big-ish plate, not, not too big. And we got the front and the down. The That's right, so you all can see it there. So what I like to do before I glaze a piece is I like to feel the entire thing after it comes out of the bisque and make sure that there's no rough edges. Because if I feel a sharp edge now, that sharp edge is gonna be there after I glaze, it'll actually even be sharper. So what you wanna do is you wanna sand down any rough areas and to do that you wanna use any sanding pad or sponge you want or you can just use sandpaper. I happen to be using a Diamond Core Tools 60 grit sanding pad but you can use whatever you want. And then I just take a bucket of water and I'll dip my sanding pad into it so I'm wet sanding. You really don't want to dry sand. It's not good for you. You don't want to breathe that silica dust up in the air. So I'll dip it and I'll feel around and see if there's any spots. And I can feel there's a little tiny burr right here. Just, just a little one, not a big one. And I'll just go in and take care of that. And then after I sand it, I'll take a damp sponge and just wipe it out to make sure there's no sanded bits left on the surface. If your bisqueware has been sitting around for a while, you might want to do a quick little sponge down of the entire piece because 
sometimes it's a little dusty and those bits of dust can actually, I'm gonna see if I can back this out a little bit. Those bits of dust will actually prevent your glaze from adhering and you get what's called crawling. And so crawling is a glaze defect and it's where something has created a barrier between the clay and the glaze. Whether it's oils from your skin, whether it's dust, whether it's wax, something is there. So you want to make sure you remove dust or anything that could get in the way. I need a cricket for my birthday. I, I actually have a um, silhouette cameo, which I like a lot. I just never have time to use it. It's really cool though, because you can print your own stencils with it. But I'm really interested in the 3D printing. Like, imagine, I could take one of my drawings and instantly have a stamp or instantly have a rolling pin in my hands and go right out to the studio. It's, it's, it's very um, intriguing to me. So once I've wiped everything down, the next step is I like to, well, it depends. If I'm dipping and pouring glaze, I will always wax my bottoms. If I'm brushing on glaze, I usually don't because you can control how that glaze is applied easier. But if it makes you feel better, you can wax your bottom. So this here is some Mr. Marks Wax On. This is a water-based wax right here. And I use this when I do Mishima, when I do my Mishima inlay. I will use it when I'm waxing handles to prevent cracking. And you'll see that in some videos. Anytime I do a join on a piece that it, it's gonna try to pull apart while it dries, I will go ahead and wax that join. It makes a huge difference in, in my loss rate, meaning I have less of a loss rate. Some of you know what I'm talking about, and I've heard from a few people this week that you all have been waxing and having a good success with the waxing. Like you waxed your handles and now they're not cracking. And so these foam brushes here, I usually buy a pack of 25 from like Amazon or your local craft store, wherever you want to get them. And the great thing about these and this particular wax is this is a water-based wax. So when I get done, I'm just going to rinse this out and I'll reuse it over and over until it falls apart. Like it will last me weeks. So although it's considered a disposable product, I don't dispose of it. I just keep working with it until I can't do anything anymore with it. Christine loves her silhouette. Yeah, I love using it to make stencils out of Tyvek paper. You know that um, same paper that envelopes from the United States Post Office is made with? Or the house wrap. And the great thing about it, it's really inexpensive. And if you ruin it, you're not out that much. It's just a little it's a little Tyvek stencil, but they are reusable too. All right, so I waxed the bottom of this. It's, you can't put it back down. You have to put it upside down so that it can dry, but this can't go upside down because it has a altered rim. So I just lay it on its side until it's dry. So we're just gonna stick it over here. Just make sure when you're waxing things, any place you get wax, glaze won't stick. So I was doing some mugs the other day and wax ran down the side and I actually have to re-bisque this mug. Now, some people use a blowtorch to melt that off. You can do that, but you're risking breaking your pot. So I, I don't do that. Like, I play it safe. Um, Kev, you wanna grab my Shimpo banding wheel for me? We're gonna, we're gonna start with this plate, and my plan for this one is gonna be using the Amico Aqua Celadon, which is maybe my favorite Celadon, from Amico and Lustrous Jade on the rim. You wanna sit it right here? Thanks, son. Look at that. And so this is the plate we're gonna do first. Now when I'm gonna do a plate before I start glazing, clean off whatever you're using to glaze upon because there could be old glaze on here and I don't wanna get it on my plate. Yeah, Debbie, wax handles before you bisque to prevent cracking. I actually have a class called uh, No More Cracked Handles. I think that's the name of it, isn't it? I think, I think we just renamed that. To, the, to wax handles? Yeah, because it used to be No Crack. No Crack. <laughs> I used to have a class called No Crack. 
This is not good for you. Crack, crack is not good for you, kids. Let, 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 me, let me search here. <laughs> Kevin's going to search. No more oh, you made it live from North Carolina. You haven't made it in a while, but you're here now. So that's what matters. I'm glad you made it. You use the aqua all the time and you love it. Me too. Yeah, let me, let me grab. Here is a finished piece. Somewhere in the overhead, so I'll just show it there. This is the aqua celadon with the lustrous jade on the rim. And I'm going to show you the back too because you can see a piece that doesn't have texture it's still gorgeous. If you like greens and kind of goldy um, colors, the, you get a little gold coming out in that rim right here where they touch. That There's a little bit of a gold hue and then green and maybe a little tiny blue happening. Um, and this aqua is a, a blue green, so it's just it's really pretty. I like it a lot. You'll notice I use blues and greens a lot in my glazing, but I'm trying to change a little because so many of you out there have said, hey, I really like reds and oranges. Will you use those too? And so I'm like, yes, yes, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. So I have got some Mako fan brushes and a huge thank you to my lovely mother who sent me two new Mako fan brushes. Thank you, mom. They were supposed to be here for Christmas, but as many of you know, Mako <laughs> ran out of brushes. But I don't know how that happened. Somehow they sold out of brushes. Like somebody recommended some brushes and everybody went and bought all that Mako had so nobody could get them, including my mom for me. So thanks mom for the new brushes. Is there something you can do with your wax resist that sat out? If your wax resist has hardened up, you can't really do anything with it. It's, it's, no, it's no more and it's not any good. So what I do is this little container, you see this? This is a little deli container. The great thing about this is I have, I have two choices. I can scrape it back into the bottle, which is usually what I do, or I can put a top on this and seal it up and that'll keep the air from drying it out. And so that's how I usually work with it in the studio is I'll have a top on this little deli dish. All right, so I've got some aqua celadon. I do have another jar. This one's looking a bit thick. Let's, let's add water. So this is my quick way of adding water when I'm in the studio. I have a clean bucket of water. I'm just going to take my sponge and squeeze. Yeah, not even a tablespoonful down in my bucket, on my little bottle, and I'm going to stir it. Cannot get rid of pinholes no matter what you do, Julie. So there's, there's a lot of things going on that create pinholing. Um, it can be your clay. It can be your bisque firing, it can be your glaze firing, and it can be the glaze itself. So, if you're using a cone 5-6 clay, I suggest you bisque a little bit hotter and slower than you normally do. So, maybe do a, if you are doing a cone 06 bisque or 05, go up one cone hotter and go a longer time and see if that helps. Also, when you are doing your glaze firing, I always do at least a 10 to 15 minute hold on my glazes because that helps all the gases to continue to escape and the pinholes to seal over. All right, so this fan brush, you see I just swirled it in that bottle and then I'm just swirling it around the outside and basically the very bottom of this plate is glazed. I'll only do one coat on this part. Check my focus. I actually need to I need to angle the camera a little bit, actually. Focus is good now. Let me see. There we go. I'll scooch, I'll scooch you a little forward. And I like to clean as I go. Let me find my bat. Hold on. There we go. So I always keep some bats around here. There we go. That's better for your pieces as you're glazing them. So... Let's see, I'm, okay, hold on. So have I used Mako's manganese wash? Yes, I have. I did, so Libby, I did a whole glazing tutorial where we used all of Mako's um, washes and we glazed them. I'll see, I'll have Kevin make a note of it and see if he can find the link for that. Um, Kevin, I don't know if you wanna pull it up. That was in a live broadcast, but I used them all. And I used the manganese wash and then I put my Chun Blue on top. Actually, they might, they, 
I don't know if they're on that table or if I, they're actually gone. So they're made, I made them as test pieces, but what ends up happening is um, they end up going to new homes, like with most everything, right? You make it as a test, they turn out nice, and then I give them away as gifts when people buy things, little, little samples is what I do. So that was one coat, and now I'm just going to do the second coat, and I'm just going back and forth, just like this. Mako Oxide Wash Tests? Yes, Mako Oxide Wash Tests. That was the broadcast. And now we're going to take this off. And I'm going to wipe off. Let me flip it Make over. Coming. Kevin's putting that link up for you. So I'm going to wipe off any residue. And so that will help you if anybody out there is using the Mako Oxide Washes or thinking about it. You can watch that tutorial. I think we did other things. We always do other things. It's never just the one thing I, the one thing I say I'm going to do plus like 50 other things. Catherine, you finally figured out how to send a comment. Yay! And green's your favorite color. I, I know. I am torn between greens and blues. I love them both. How's the snow? Still coming <laughs> three days later. It's still snowing. So I was supposed to have... Uh, a refrigerator, a new refrigerator delivered to the new house yesterday and they called Monday and they're like uh, we have to reschedule that to Saturday and then they call me yesterday and they're like uh, can we do it Wednesday and I just laughed I laughed at the lady, not, not meanly, I was like yeah, well it's gonna still be snowing so let's wait until Saturday, we'll just wait it's better okay so let's do this now although this looks really dark right now it's going to turn into this beautiful, light, transparent green-blue color. And the red color you're seeing here is actually iron oxide in the glaze. So it makes everything look really dark. Now, iron oxide, you might know when it's highly concentrated, is a brown. Sometimes if it's really concentrated, it can go black. And there's different types of, of iron oxide. I'm talking about... Spanish red iron oxide. So with those iron oxides, you know, you can get colors that are like a beautiful rusty brown, tomato red, a deep rich black brown. Um, and when you go to the lighter amounts, when you put less in, you start to move down to olive greens and then to like a light celadon green and to the aqua we have here. So iron oxide is an amazing thing because with just one mineral, because it's a mineral, just one mineral, you can get a wide variety of glaze colors. So if you had a clear glaze base and you added iron oxide in varying percentages to that clear glaze base, made a lot of tests, you could come up with a whole line of glazes that only use iron oxide. And I believe in our our practical glazing chemistry class, that's exactly what Drew Seymour teaches. So that's one of our workshops. And he teaches a lot about glazing. So if you want to know about glazing, I'm going to check that out. All right, so we put one coat on, and I like to let them dry in between. With the aqua, believe it or not, I'll put three coats on, and it, it'll look good. Like, we can do three coats without a problem. So what's the difference between Spanish red iron oxide and just plain red iron oxide? It's, it's pretty much all Spanish. Usually if they're selling red iron oxide, it's Spanish. They're just leaving that off. So there's black iron oxide, there's red iron oxide. We just call it RIO, which is the Spanish. Some of the Spanish red iron oxide I've seen looks redder, but in my tests, they always look exactly the same. But Drew might be watching. Drew, tell me if the Spanish um, red iron oxide, do you find it's redder? than just regular, and now I always find it to be the same, so I, I thought it was just the same. So we'll get some clarification then. <laughs> Libby says, I need Drew's class. So sometimes we can wait just a few minutes and we can do our second coat. I think, I think we're safe to do that. And then I'll just come back and do the third coat, and then we'll start on another piece. Let's see where we are, I'm trying to keep track of time. I wanna get everything, I wanna get everything done. So do the celadons look better when they are fired to cone five instead of six? Yes. So I'll tell you a little thing about Amico celadons, and I do love them. They are great glazes. They will be brighter at cone five than they will be at cone six. 
They will also be brighter on a light clay body, like a porcelain, than any other clay. So the clay I'm using here is Laguna B-Mix 5, which is a stoneware. It's a light cream colored clay. It has kaolin in it, which is what makes porcelain porcelain, so we call it a porcelainous stoneware. So it behaves a little bit like porcelain in that respect too, that it is a little finicky. But any light colored clay is going to be brighter than say a mid-tone clay or a dark clay. I would not use a celadon on a dark clay unless I put a light colored slip on first. Then I would. And I've done that. But I wouldn't do it on just a dark clay without that light slip there. Alright, so that's our, our two coats of that. And then I think we're just going to balance this in here. Alright, which one do next? The bowl? <laughs> Let's do the bowl. I figured we should do a bowl since I really want to glaze this one. And I think we're going to go with maybe marigold or maybe tangelo and poppy. I love tangelo and poppy together. So are we on YouTube? So we broadcast our live broadcasts onto YouTube, but ClayShare.com is its own thing. And we have our own OTT platform and OTT channel. So you can download the app, ClayShare. Just go to your app store. Find another one of my round, all my round bats. You wanna grab me a few round bats? All my round bats are over by my wheel. Um, so you can just go to your app store and you can download us and you can browse and you can check out our classes for free. And if you decide to sign up, we have a seven day free trial. You can check that out too. But we are, I don't put everything on YouTube. The only thing that goes on YouTube are these live broadcasts, this live broadcast every Wednesday at five is the only thing that goes on YouTube. The private broadcast for premium members that happens Monday morning and the private broadcast that happens immediately after this is not on YouTube, it's only on ClayShare. Plus our full length premium classes are only on ClayShare along with our workshops. Those are the, the, the only thing on YouTube is gonna be the free, content. the free content, which is one broadcast a week, which is pretty good. You get, you get a free tutorial every week. Thanks, hon. That's great. They're, they're a little clay-y, but I'll take it. Everything not covered very It's a pottery studio. It's got clay on it. <laughs> what? All right, so we're going to use the Tangelo, and, you know... I'm wondering, do I, I've, I've gone down this road before and I have used the tangelo and I have made the flowers dark by staining them, but I think we're going to do poppy first on just the flowers and then tangelo on top of them. And if you don't know what tangelo and poppy look like when they are fired, let me give you a little preview. So this one here is tangelo, this one is poppy. They're very similar to each other. Tangelo is like a yummy cantaloupe color, and then poppy is a little deeper, a little, a little peachier, well, maybe a little redder. And I really adore both of them. On just about everything I've ever put them on. Let's see. This one here. Let's see. So, you tuned in late. Do I put clear on iron oxide? It faded your oxide. Right. So, when you're using red iron oxide, you do want to cover it with something, usually, because you want, to, you want to glaze on top of it. But if you don't use enough red iron oxide, it'll go streaky. So if you want it to be a rich, dark, um, like, mahogany color, you, you want to go a little heavy with your iron oxide. And all you do is take your iron oxide powder, mix it with water, and I usually tell everybody to start with the consistency of ink, but you know, if you want it really thick, then you need it a little thicker than ink. So I say add a little more iron oxide and see how that looks. Suge I suggest strongly you do tests before you actually put it on a piece. Because if you've spent all this time making a piece you love, and then you do a test on it and you ruin it, you will be very disappointed. So always have some little dishes actually. You know, if I thought, I don't know if I can grab my red iron oxide and do some tests tonight, but we can do red iron oxide tests on another broadcast. All right, so I did one coat of the poppy. I'm going to flip it over 
and I'm going to get a little trickier. I'm grabbing the marigold. We're going to put other colors in too. I didn't tell you, did I? i to keep you on your toes. <laughs> marigold, yes. We're going to use marigold for, um, for the front side because it's the fancy side. I'm going to put the marigold in the very center of these daisies. So these will be painted daisies, not Shasta daisies. They'll be pretty bright colored daisies. And I'm just kind of blopping them in. Now, Amico Celadons are a very stable glaze. And what that means is they don't tend to run. They tend to stay put. Which is really nice for this technique because we can go ahead and just drop it on. Let me wipe that up. And if you put it where you don't want it, just sponge it out. And so they stay put, which is a really nice thing if you want your glazes to not blend and run into each other. Because sometimes you might not want that. Hi Jenny, I'm glad you made it. It's Laura's first time here. Hi. So Kathleen asks, can you just add water to your manganese and make it a wash? That's exactly what it is. Yep, if you have manganese and you want to make it a wash, you can just add water to it. You can do the same thing with cobalt. You could do it with copper. Really, any oxide you have, you can add water to it and turn it into a wash. Yep. And so what you do is you apply it to the surface, and depending on what you're going for, you can either wipe it back so it fills in the recessed areas, or you can leave it full strength and, you know, see what happens. All right, we didn't do the yellow on the back side at first. So now we're going to, we'll see what happens if I drop it on in. And I'm going pretty thick with the marigold, so I'm only going to do one coat of that. Let's go back in with the poppy. And I'm just going to blob that on. So it's a creative way to glaze, and you notice it takes a little while to do something like this. Unlike we did with that first plate, where we just brushed on our two coats pretty quickly. So sometimes I'll do a piece like I'm doing here, you know, I'll take my time. And then sometimes I'll just, you know, just ch -ch -ch glaze a whole bunch of things and be done. Just depends either my mood, how I'm feeling, or, or what my plan is for the, piece, for the piece. All right, that's good. Now, if they touch each other, it's okay. Now we're gonna get into the Tangelo. And we're gonna switch to this brush here. So I'm actually going to be using Sumi brushes, I think, for this instead of the fan brushes because I need to control where my glaze is going. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab this one. This is a three-quarter inch. I don't know if you call it an oval brush. This is from Royal Langnickel. All right, so let's go in with the Tangelo. I already waxed the bottom of this. So I'm going to go right up to the edge, just kind of pounce it in there a little bit. Amico Celadons are really good at self-leveling. Not that other companies don't, I've just not tried everybody's. I've tried Amico's, so I know they do. I'm going to just scooch that all the way around. So that's the inside done. So if I had some cone 5-6 glaze pieces run onto the kiln shelf at cone 6, ground off the drips, can you refire to smooth out the bubbles and bottoms of your pieces? Well, yeah, you could. They're going to run again, possibly. Your best bet is actually to grind your bottoms. You shouldn't refire them to get them smooth. You should grind them. That's what um, pretty much everybody does and what I do. Now, I do have tutorials on grinding your bottoms. Surprise, surprise because, you know, we all need to do that. And you can use a grinding disc or you can use a Dremel with a bit 
added to it. I know some people use angle grinders to do it too. I think that's a little, that's a little scary, but um, some people do it. So my suggestion would be not to refire. I would grind them off. If it's really, really bad, like really bad, you might want to refire, but it's probably going to run and drip. And yes, I would only go to five, not six. So you could try doing that and then grinding if you have to, right? So while I'm glazing, I can talk about ClayshareCon coming up February 24th through the 28th. That's a free online ceramic conference. And we are going to have demos, tutorials, factory tours, studio tours from potters. We are going to have um, product giveaways. It's going to be so fabulous. Clayscapes Pottery is going to be hosting an after hours party and a giveaway, which will be pretty fun, I think. That will be on the Friday night. So more details next Wednesday. That's when I'm going to give you all the details on everything that's happening, all the giveaways, all the sponsors, all the promos, because there's going to be special offers. You know, this, this is just like if you were going to a clay conference on the ground and you wanted to see products and, you know, get to talk to company representatives. This is a way that you can do that from the comfort of your own home. We're gonna have Jeff from GR Pottery Forms doing demos. I think he's gonna do one every day. I asked him, I said, I said, do you wanna do a demo, what day? And he sends me back every day a time slot. I was like, all right, you can do it every day. That works for me, I don't mind. And I know Drew at Clayscapes is gonna do a demo, um, at least one, maybe a couple, we'll see. And I'll be doing a lot of demos. You know, some of these, these companies, they don't have representatives that are free and able to do the demos themselves. So I'll take over and I'll do the demos. Plus I'm gonna teach some carving techniques. D Diamond Core Tools is gonna do a giveaway of 15 products. 15, that's right, just listen. 15 Diamond Core prizes. Uh-huh, that's right. And so to be eligible, you just go to clayshare.com and sign up for the email, sign up for our email list, and that's it. And you can also check out the website, clayshare.con.com. That's the official clayshare.con website. And all, the, all of the clayshare.con will be broadcast there, but it also will be broadcast on Clayshare and on the apps too. So you can watch it everywhere. So that'll be starting on a Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. and going straight through to Sunday at 5. It's going to be crazy and awesome and full of pottery. All right, so I think the back's pretty good. I'm like, I'll just do a little something on this. How did you get those daisies on there? Is that a stamp? They're a stamp. These are a stamp, and I stamped it while it was a flat slab. Um, we did this in a broadcast, but I think it was a private broadcast. I think it was for our premium members is when I did it. And it was, uh, Sharon sent me, these are, this is from my Daisy rolling pin. Um, here's my, my rolling pin, my textured rolling pin. So Sharon, who I send my designs to and she makes and sells the rolling pins. I don't make and sell them. I only do the designs, but she made a set of stamps in my daisies. So she sent them to me for trying out and this was the piece we tried it out on and actually the bowl was one of Sharon's shapes so Sharon Hoppy um, also does her own forms and so these were from her this particular form that I used to make this bowl and I, I think we did it on a broadcast but it was a while ago it was way before Christmas I'm thinking it was probably last autumn if anybody out there remembers, and I know some of you sometimes do, because I'll say, I don't remember when I did that, and then someone will say, oh, that was back in June. And I'll be like, oh, your memory is much better than mine. So I'm just pouncing these guys in. Ah, Anne has such a good question, and she says it's off topic, but it's not really. Suggestions for really dry hands. I know that is something all potters suffer from chronically dry hands, especially in cold temperatures. So honestly, there's a lot of things out there. There's a product called No Crack, which is really good. 
Um, there is a bunch of people who love using Gold Bonds lotion. You know, I have been using the Gold Bond lotion lately because I ran out of the no crack and it works really, really well. I have found the best lotions are ones that are formulated for sensitive skin or people with eczema because our hands are so dry, they don't need perfumes, they don't need all those additives. So just go with an unscented. Don't buy Bath and Body Works lotion for your hands. <laughs> it's not it's not good it's not gonna be good. It smells nice, but it's not gonna help not really. But if anybody uh, has suggestions for lotions that they love, share it out there. And I, I think it's you know something where the community can help each other out. So this was Sharon's deep hexagon form. Yes, Lise, Lise uh, it is, yes. Yep, 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 it is. That's her deep hexagon. And you can see when she makes her hexagons, she um, has it as one form instead of stacking forms, which means you don't get the lines. A lot of people, have said they don't enjoy the lines that you get when you stack forms. So she's come out with a line of deep forms. And then you don't have to stack. But it makes this really lovely bowl. And I did one with my reindeer stamps and glazed that in my Oribe and red iron oxide. That was one we did, that one we did around the holidays. And that one's done. So I see Brenda's asking, will I have a kiln opening Sunday? I will not. Um, I am glazing, I, well, I'm, I'm firing my baby kiln, but none of this is in it. Um, and I might share that because it's my eldest daughter's birthday on Monday, and I made her something and it has to get glazed. So I'll be glazing her pieces and a few others to go in the baby kiln. But I won't have another big kiln firing for a little while, probably right before Clay Share Con or during Clay Share Con, maybe maybe during i don't know though i don't i have a lot happening there but um this is one shelf in the kiln <laughs> so this there's not enough pieces to fire but maybe next weekend we'll do a kiln opening because believe me i have got to get pots glazed so my painting over the flower up to it i'm painting over it I am letting them blend together a little bit. It's more of a watercolor loose glazing technique. I am not trying to stop exactly at the edge. So what I'm doing here, if that's what you're going for and you want, this would not make you happy. This is a much looser glaze technique. So you keep a small tin of green goo hand balm in your studio and you love it, Sharon suggests. I've never heard of green goo. I'll have to check into that. Ah, uh -huh. Anne makes her own lotions. Humblebee and me have some great recipes. Yeah. Um, years ago, Kevin used to make soaps and lotions. But, um, you know, with our lives, there's no way he has time to do that anymore. He stopped doing that. Oh, like 10 years ago now, but <laughs> it was a while ago. But it was pretty nice when he made it for us. So now I usually just go to the farmer's markets and pick up stuff. Um, and in Vermont, they do it where you can order and they'll deliver. So it's pretty nice to keep the, the makers and the farmers going. We can support them and order online and then they'll do a drop off for you or you can pick up at some of the farmers markets. So Julie says that, yeah, the pottery is hard on her hands. She alternates between Gold Bond, Ultimate Radiance Renewal, and plain coconut oil. You find if you alternate and mix it up, they're more effective. Yeah, I've used the Palmer's coconut um, oil lotion, and that really helps. I tried lanolin, but uh, the lanolin was too itchy for me. But uh, the Palmer's, yeah, that's a pretty good one, too. Utterly smooth hand cream is nice. So glaze and talk about hand cream. It's So those of you who are watching that are not potters, <laughs> I 
it's a real thing. My hands will crack and bleed in the winter. It's, it's pretty bad. You know, you have your, your fingers will actually split open and bleed. And when that happens, I will use, well, if I have new skin, I'll use that to heal it, you know, to seal it over. But I don't always have new skin. And, but I almost always have super glue. And I know that's not the best thing, but I do it when my, my, my thumbs like to crack open. It's winter in Vermont and pottery. <laughs> More questions about that daisy. Is that daisy stamp one of yours? This is my design, yes. And Sharon sells it? Sharon was selling it. I'm, yes. It would be on Sharon Hoppy Designs. She was going to put it up uh, back before Christmas. I think she did. I don't think Sharon's here tonight. But it's my daisy stamp. I'll check and see. Like Kevin's going to check and see. But, you know, seeing this made me realize that um, I've really been into seeing everybody use their own 3D printers. And since I draw a lot, it would be really nice for me to take my drawings and I could, like, do a preliminary test stamp and see how they work, right? And if it looks like it's a great stamp or a great design, it's something that I could then put out there for you all or those of you who have 3D printers, you know. There we are. Could get your own. Did you find it? There it is. Jesse's Daisies. Kevin found it. It's called Jess's Daisies. It's called Daisy's Daisies, actually, JPP. JPP is my initials. Some of you might not know when it says JPP, that is me, because um, I'm JPP. So it takes a little while, but I promise you, I've done this before on a mug, and it was, it was so good. And I did take a photo. I put that in a sale last spring, and that was snapped up in minutes. Oh, Vanessa makes 3D stencils. I've seen some of the 3D stuff she uh, was doing around Christmas time. That was awesome. I know. I'm really excited about the idea of a 3D printer. Um, now, I, I love the idea of one for clay, too, but I would rather work with one that uses, like, plastic filament to start with to, to make my own texture tools. Okay, so we are done with the actual for, well, all the layers of the poppy. Now we're going to move on to the tangelo. And then we'll move on to something and we'll glaze. Oh, we'll see if we can get there. We're getting close oh, to the end. How did this happen? A said to add a little oil to your throwing water to help with dry hands. Oh. I've never heard of that before. My concern with the oil in my throwing water is that the oil would be on the surface and when I apply underglaze um, to do my Mishima or to do my Scrafito, it will repel. But I don't know. That would be an interesting um, thing. But an oil is a barrier, right? And again, I need to have my underglaze or slip go on smooth for when I'm going to do my carving. Let me look into that. I'm interested by the idea though. So if you're just straight throwing and not going to do any uh, scraffito or mishima, that might be... Well, it could, I mean, if that oil is on the surface, it could act as a resist for your just regular blades too. Well, the thing is you're going to bisque fire and that'll burn out. Oh, so as long as you're not doing single fire. Right, as long as you're not doing a single fire, you'll be fine. Because all, everything burns off in the bisque. And then you don't have to worry about like a like a residual like residue left behind use baby oil bag bomb i can't use too many oily stuff it makes my hands itch like crazy i have found i do make a um a salve of my own from echinacea and olive oil and i'll use that when it gets really bad it's an old home remedy for eczema that I, I learned when I was taking my class from Rosemary Gladstar. Lynn's husband up at made Sage his, Mountain. built his own 3D printer. You made your own 3D printer. Holy cats. And you can make stencils too, I know. I am like, whoa, you can make stencils. I could get in so much, imagine the trouble I could get in if I had my own 3D printer. I think you all can. So I'm doing this, and I'm avoiding all the flowers, but I may at some point just do a coat. I don't know if I want to cover everything, though. 
No, I don't want to do that. So that was... Is that one layer? Is that just one? <laughs> it goes as fast as it goes. So I did a podcast interview, so my voice is a little going. <laughs> so I did that. Um, so talking tonight, it could get really interesting in our, in our primetime broadcast. And we'll talk about that um, podcast and when that's coming out in a couple weeks. And we'll talk more about Clay Share Con. In our, our live tutorial we're doing tonight in primetime, we're going to be layering Amico Shino glazes. So we're going to be doing a bunch of bowls and we're going to do a bunch of layering with the different Shino glazes and playing with them. So that's going to be a really fun tutorial. You know, I thought I had done one on that already, but apparently I hadn't. I had just done it for me, not for you all. But now it's going to be out there for premium members to join in and watch tonight. And then it will be recorded, you know, so anybody who's watching now that isn't a premium member, if you sign up as a premium member, you get access to all these past live tutorials along with the premium full-length classes. So you don't have to worry about missing out. You get it all. All right, so I'm doing the edge. So you have an Ender 3D Pro 3. I've been hearing a lot about that. I'm going to blame Michael. Michael, it's your fault. <laughs> because I had been thinking about it casually um, for a while. And then I, I started seeing what you were doing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I think I've turned the corner from casual to seriously interested. <laughs> but it's a good thing to get blamed for, you know. Uh, I'm always looking for new ways to innovate my pottery and to be creative and, you know, just just to try out new tools. And so for me, part of the excitement is that I can continue to be creative in different ways. And, I mean, that's why you can do this your whole life long and never get bored. And you don't need a 3D printer for that. Of course you don't. But, um, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, the technology is now available and... I was looking at them and they've reached the point where they're much more affordable than even I thought they would be. So, not saying everybody should go buy a 3D printer, not at all. But it definitely interests me. So, Diane has a question. Are there only premium members? Yes, Kevin's ty Kevin keep typing. He's answering you in the long form, so it'll be there for everybody to read later on. But um, we only have one membership level on ClayShare. We used to have a free membership, and then we decided we're just going to let you have free without signing in. So if you are a premium member, um, you get access to everything. Everybody else that wants to watch, you don't have to sign in, but you can watch everything for free that we have for free. So we, we did that to make everything a little simpler on our end. All right, I think it's done. Now I'm gonna let this dry all the way and then I wanna go back in and make sure I didn't miss any spots or the glaze hasn't dried in a way where it pulls and leaves a little hole that's unglazed. So I'll just watch it after it's dried and I'll, I'll go back and check it so we can roll to the front. You're a tool person too. I am a tool person as well. It's, um, I don't, it's not a bad thing, it's just, it's just how it is, right? We're all, all different, and I like trying things out. I like really um, pushing my creativity and seeing what I can do with materials, so I think that's part of it for me. So this brush here is a three-quarter inch, I believe it's an oval brush, it's actually um, from Royal Langnickel. It's the SG75MSS. I'll have Kevin write that down and post it. It's the three quarter inch from Royal and it's the SG75MSS. SG75MSS. Yep. And we'll post that for everybody. Um, most hobby and craft stores carry it. 
it's a good one for holding a lot of glaze and getting into a little more narrower spots. I love my Mako fan brushes, but they're better for wide areas. So, Melissa, you've been toying with the 3D, 3-in-1 CNC laser and 3D printer. Ooh. Wow. That's a lot of different capability. You imagine just like, well, the beautiful things you've made me, uh, you know. And my girls, thank you for the earrings. They love them. All right, I'm going to stop fiddling, although I can't really hurt it. So this has got to sit to the side. Let's quickly do our last coat of the Aqua because I wanted to get to the Lustrous Jade on this. I, we have got four minutes to see if I can do that. Sometimes you'll see in your Amico Celadon after you've applied two coats, you'll see almost a pinhole before the glaze has been fired. Sometimes that it usually melts and is gone and it's not a problem but if you're concerned about it you can always just gently rub them and they go away and that usually helps fill them in um, I try not to do this too much because I don't want to disturb the glaze and put it up in the air and breathe it right that's something we don't want to do so let's do our third coat of the aqua celadon the big brush that's right it's the big brush and this is a Mako fan brush, a number eight, I believe is the one that I have right here. But you can see this is a great brush for like sopping up a bunch of glaze. All right, so do I accept visitors? My studio is out of my home right now. Um, I will eventually, I was open to the public. We have shut to the public. You know, the state of Vermont does not allow visitors right now. Um, eventually, my studio will be open again to the public um, after I move and we get the new studio set up and everything, we'll get that straightened out. But yeah, I used to do open studio weekend and have people in and I hope to do that again, but not just quite yet. We're not, we're not able to do that quite yet. So that's our third coat of the aqua. All right, I don't need any more of that, so I can just put the brush away. If you're looking forward to seeing these fired, I know I've only got two things done in this, but we're going to glaze more in prime time, so we will have more pots for the kiln depending on um, how many I can get done. You know, normally when I'm glazing, I can, I can glaze quite a few more than I've done tonight, but when we're answering questions, you know, it is, I want to answer your questions. So it, it takes me a little longer than normal. So the last step in this, and I'm just going to kind of show you, I can't do it yet because the glaze is too wet, but once this glaze dries all the way, I will take this lustrous jade and I will just go I might be able to do a quick little mm, yeah put me up top gotcha. so you can tell it's not really adhering like it's supposed to but I will do this band all the way around just like this and I'll do it twice so I'll do two coats of the lustrous jade just like that on the outside rim there and then I'll fire it. That's it. And it will look something like this. So that this turns into this crazy chemistry because of red iron oxide changing. It's like magic. So sometimes when you're using a glaze and you're expecting it to look a certain way and in the bottle it doesn't, that's completely normal. Most glazes don't look like anything. A lot of companies add colorants like this glaze this poppy glaze has dyes added to it to give it a poppy tone, but it normally would have no color um, really at all. Probably just a light greenish tint, believe it or not, would be all that was in this poppy. So that's the magic of pottery. 
<laughs> all right so i will share these all when they're done i see melissa is she gonna is my daughter gonna get her ears pierced she may she, she may i think it's motivation something to do down the line right <laughs> so uh sarah best says mako fan brushes changed her glaze game i know they are amazing so I think we've got everything going on. I think I mentioned everything that's happening. Next week we'll talk about Clay Share Con. I'll give you all the details. I'll have a schedule up so you know what's happening when. Some demos um, are already scheduled now, but we're getting more as we go on. And hopefully by when, next Wednesday we'll have all the demos up. Um, things might get added to it, so it might just be even more. Plus we can start doing the giveaway announcements. Although I know Diamond Core Tools is gonna do 15 products as part of the giveaway. And Georgie's Ceramic is gonna do the giveaway. So isn't Mako and Speedball, and I believe Clayscapes is in too. And Garrity Tools just reached out to me, so they're gonna be a part of it as well. So we're gonna get everything together. And um, I think Kevin told me last minute, he said, Rich McNatt, who makes my fabulous rolling pin holders, is gonna be doing a giveaway too. So that's awesome. And we'll have more things coming online as we get closer to ClayshareCon. But until then, you can check out last year's ClayshareCon. Go to ClayshareCon.com or to ClayShare.com and you can watch it there. And if you haven't checked out all of our classes on ClayShare, what are you waiting for? Go check it out. They're there. You can browse them or sign up for a free trial. And all of you who are premium members, you know what's happening next. Meet me in 15 minutes over on ClayShare or in the private group. And we're going to be doing layering glazes with Shino glazes. Bye, everybody.